Wonka is back on top as it overtakes Aquaman 2 at the box office. Civil War, is its runtime really over three hours? And Scream 7's director has dropped out of the project. Let's get into this week's movie news and Happy New Year, everybody. We hope you have a great night tonight getting into 2024. Stay safe and have fun, everyone. Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. There's a lot of news to go over and a ton of new Christmas releases at the box office. Now, like James said, Wonka, in its third week, managed to come out on top yet again. There's chocolate, then there's chocolate. So Wonka is expected to pass 300 million globally in the next couple of days. And this past weekend, it, it earned 33 million in its third weekend. It's insane. That's enough. how much it made on its first weekend, I think. On Friday, it pulled in 8.5 million at the Friday box office just alone that day. This movie is killing it right now. I'm so happy for it because it's such a good movie. Yeah. You all know how much wonka fied we are. We are. We got the Wonka chocolate brain. This movie was awesome. We hope you have a chance to see it, but clearly this was the movie that families chose to go see as it demolished Aquaman 2 on its second weekend. Aquaman 2 in the Lost Kingdom, only pulled in $26 million domestic. It hasn't even passed $150 million global. This is a movie that cost over $200 million production. Marketing, add that in, probably $300 million movie. And again, it probably has to hit $700 million to be profitable. And keep in mind, this is the Christmas vacation for teens. So this should be a time where it earns a shit ton of money. And compared to the first Aquaman, which pulled a billion, this is easily the biggest disappointment for DC this year, which is ironic because The Flash was so publicized how big of a bomb that was, but it's just like Aquaman 2 is everyone's like, ah, eh, whatever, it's a bomb, no one cares. Yeah, I think Warner Brothers is happy to get this over with, I think. Just, just getting like a little the revenue. The Band-Aid's finally ripped off. <laughs> it's over. And next up, we have Illumination's Migration, which had a pretty healthy $21 million weekend, and it's at $66 million globally. The color purple had a... Well, the thing with Migration is... It started, off, it started off a little slow at the uh -huh. box office because this is its second week. Kids aren't in love with ducks, you know. I th are they ducks? They're ducks. You told me they were geese last week. I didn't say they were geese. You I said, said geese are bigger. No, you said it's about... I said it was about birds. You said it was about geese. No, you said it was we, about birds. I said it was ducks. I edited the movie news. <laughs> Whatever. And you said geese. It's about ducks. Now we have these changes too. And it's Could about, be geese. Apparently, it's about ducks now, which I think huh, it is. What do geese look like? <laughs> <laughs> They're different than ducks. So this movie's actually having a second solid week because it didn't really drop off too much like Aquaman 2 dropped 55% in its weekend to weekend. Wonka hasn't really had much of a drop and migration is just staying steady. So it's at $66 million global. So that eventually I think will turn a profit. In fourth place, the color purple. It's ducks. It, yeah, it's, it's ducks. ducks. Fourth place, the color purple pulled in $16 million this New Year's Eve weekend. And it made $18 million on Christmas Day alone. Did it really? Just on that day. It was Holy a huge crap. So Color Purple had the second biggest opening for Christmas Day ever. That's insane. Yeah, 18 mil. It's over $30 million at the box office. Clearly, that movie's going to be a success. Told you it would be a hit. You did. I told I you. It. I, I guess the musicals this <laughs> Christmas break is just killing. And a lot of people were craving a rom-com, so they went and saw Anyone But You, which debuted with $10 million. Pretty decent for a rom-com in theaters. That's not its debut. Oh, it's it not. It, so it came out the 22nd. Gotcha. So this gotcha. is technically its second weekend because it had the Christmas wow, weekend. doing well. So it pulled in $10 million this weekend. Its total gross around the world is $19 million at the box office. Not bad. On a budget of $25 million, I expect it to, you know, maybe potentially hit a profit, but definitely break even at some point. Pretty but good. People seem people say it's pretty good. Yeah, I heard pretty good reviews about it. The thing is, we, we expect these rom-coms to be the pinnacle of cinema. It's just, it's just a rom-com. And it's because the marketing campaign was so dreadful. Yeah, it was. It was ridiculous. Marketing. I kind of want to see it, though. Yeah. I, I want to see it. Next up, we have George Clooney's The Boys in the Boat came out on Christmas Day as well. It has pulled in $8 million, $8 million at the box office. I want to actually see it because it's getting great reactions from audiences. So it's the 7.3 on IMDb. And it's a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes audience score. It looks like maybe his best movie. Yeah. I, I'm really looking great. forward to it. I think it's a great story. Now, I love sports dramas. The trailer is excellent when we saw it in theaters last week. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have one of the biggest bombs of the year right now. Michael Mann's Ferrari on a $95 million budget. It's opening week and weekend. It only pulled in $6.8 million at the box office. We saw it. We loved it. It's an excellent racing movie and just a great movie all around. But man, no one wanted to see it, apparently. This is a bad time to come out. There's way too much competition, and a lot of your audience is, is, uh, audience is choosing other movies to watch, like Aquaman and Iron Claw, so, and The Boys in the Boat. So 
And for, so it looks like more family friendly movies. Ferrari should have come out in September or October. Man, what a bomb! Holy crap! Yeah, terrible. One of the worst of the year. Sad to see. It's, it's a really good movie. We can't recommend it enough. Yeah. We really loved it. Maybe it'll do really well in Europe. We have an A24 release. The Iron Claw came in eighth place with six million dollars. It's doing really well at the box office. Third week, chugging along. Yeah, it's doing well. It's getting close to thirty million dollars for box office. Good for the Iron Claw. Yeah, we love the film. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Let's get into some movie news. Even though it's a pretty slow week in terms of news, we found some stuff. We scraped the bottom we, of the barrel. We, find it. we found some good stuff. We, we, sco- we scoured you the internet. You can't get the news past us. We scoured the net for about two hours. We found it all. So, first of all, Rebel Moon Part 2 has a teaser out. This will be coming out this year in 2024. And also, Netflix released that Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire, had 23.9 million views in its first three days on Netflix. Very good for the streamer. But obviously, it's had terrible critical and audience reaction. And the teaser for part two came out as well. I haven't even seen the first one. I didn't watch it because I was like, I don't really want to see the movie. So I'm not going <laughs> to. I don't know. I guess that I don't know if people are going to be as excited. But I think that people will watch out of curiosity, just like they did with Rebel Moon part one. I think that a lot of people did out of curiosity. Yeah. Clearly. Clearly. Next up, Screen 7 has another update of Absolute Chaos. Christopher Landon, the director who signed on for the seventh film, he previously directed Happy Death Day, has dropped out of the project amid the controversy. In fact, according to a tweet from the director, he left the project a few weeks ago. It's only being announced now. He said, I quote, I guess I guess now is as good a time as any to announce that I formally exited Scream 7 weeks ago. This this will disappoint some and delight others. It was a dream job that turned into a nightmare, and my heart will my heart did break for everyone involved. Everyone. But it's time to move on. I have nothing more to add to the conversation other than I hope Wes's legacy thrives and lifts above the din of a divided world. What he and Kevin created is something amazing, and I was honored to have even be to even have the briefest moment basking in their glow. So now the project has lost its lead actors. And its director, so it's, it's kind completely of completely in limbo. Yeah. Spyglass and Paramount distributing that; they just don't know what to do with it. At least we're gonna get a break from screen movies. <laughs> I think I, I still think that directors need to not take Twitter so seriously because he wrote, "This will disappoint you, point some, and delight others." Like, relax, get off, the, stop reading the comments, guy. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's a, yeah. They're not coming after you; they're coming after the movie. I think, mm-hmm. but it's too bad. I think Happy Death Day was a really cool movie. He's, I think, an excellent choice for Scream Seven, but obviously, Spyglass. They shot themselves in the foot here. They really did. They really should just take a few years off. And of just, Scream? Yeah. <laughs> just, they should just hit the, hit the hit the brakes and then just wait a few years if they want to continue Yeah, even if they movies. get it back into development and figure out what to do with... I, I guess they just have to reboot the whole goddamn thing because they lost the lead the actresses. Line. Yeah. The lead characters. And the, obviously the faces of the franchise right now. They should now. do a Ghostface Origins. <laughs> what, Billy Loomis? <laughs> of like how he got the mask. Yeah, and how he did it all. His perspective. <laughs> so it's, it's going to be like he, 50 he, shades, knit, he knitted the outfit. It's going to be Fifty Shades of Grey, the other version of the books where it's from his perspective. He's crafting the mask like Batman and Batman Begins. I mean, I'm sure Spyglass threw that on the whiteboard. They probably did. What about an origin story for Billy Lewis? Do Lewis's? they have anything else? Spyglass Entertainment? I wonder. They got some. I'm sure they got other. Didn't they do the the other horror movies in the 90s? Like, I know, I know you did last, last summer. summer. Didn't they do that? I think they did. I'm pretty sure because Spyglass was pretty big in the 90s and early 2000s because they had Scream. Oh, um, no, yeah. That's they, all they got is Scream. The Recruit for Christmas's Ghost Town's Ticket in Underdog. The Ruins. Some pretty good movies. Oh, they had, they're, they just dropped The Boys in the Boat. Okay. They, they produced that. Yeah, but they need to keep the bills on, the lights on. The Sixth Sense, Star Trek. They made a money, bunch of money off The Sixth Sense. Damn. Right. Yeah, so they're doing okay. Well, let's move on to some they're other not news. Doing okay. <laughs> they're not now. They're ruined. They're ruined. <laughs> Just make movies. You blew it. Stop tweeting stuff. Just make movies. <laughs> Moving on to A24 Civil War from director Alex Garland. Uh, so on the IMDb of the film, it's said that the runtime is three hours and 15 minutes. However, A24 just confirmed to Variety that the film is now under two hours long. War, Civil War will run at 109 minutes, so not even a two-hour-long movie. Yeah, there's a, a bunch of controversy. People were sharing this everywhere. They're like, is this really the runtime of Civil War? Three hours and 15 minutes because of IMDb's error on their website. Well, IMDb didn't make the error. Well, <laughs> it's 
the people wrote involved it. in the movie made the page. Well, IMDb. It was just on IMDb. List, yeah, so I, IMDb's at blame here. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely IMDb's fault. I mean, it could have been the assembly cut. Was three hours and fifteen. It could have been a marketing stunt. It was just an, an assistant who works for the for the studio made the IMDb. Page oh, do you know them, error. Anthony? I'm just saying were, that's were my you guess. There? That's my guess. So you saw you were with the assistant. I'm as saying they IMDb. Typed up IMDb, the IMDb does page. not make the pages. People make the pages on IMDb. So so okay, I didn't realize you knew the assistant that did it. I'm. That's my guess. <laughs> my guess is someone involved <laughs> in the production made the page and wrote three hours fifteen Imagine minutes. Imagine if it was Alex Garland made the page and he fucked it up. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, people make IMDb pages. But thank goodness, because, I mean, we're going to see this movie. Y'all know how iffy we are about it, and to see a three-hour, 15-minute <laughs> version of it would have been tough to sit through, I think. But hour, an hour, 109 minutes, so... Not hour, even two hours. Hour 40. That's, it hour seems, 50. It's a lot shorter than I was expecting it to be. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Okay, let's move on to some other stuff. So, we have an update on Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis, who we are also covering in January. We're doing a... An Apocalypse Now episode. So get excited for that. Do your homework. And obviously Megalopolis, I believe, is coming out in 2024, right? I believe. And Adam Driver says that it's wild, imaginative, and epic. It felt like, oh, this is how movies should be. Nice. That's a good logline. This is how movies should be. I love it. I can't wait. Francis Ford's one of the best ever. He's been sort of, you know... MIA in the 2000s and 2010s. He's he's just, old. He's all uh, yeah, he's, he's making some, wine. Yeah, he's making wine. He's he's <laughs> he's chilling. <laughs> he's chilling. He's enjoying yeah, that wine. He's enjoy, enjoying the luxuries that his suffering produces. <laughs> For real. <laughs> <laughs> so he's made a ton of movies this century, but Megalopolis is a lifelong dream project of his, and I cannot wait for it to come out. And Adam Driver's the lead. I mean, everybody loves Adam Driver. Can't think of a bad word anyone said about him. Me neither. He's a great guy. He is a great guy. All right, next He's so up. good in Ferrari, by the way. He's so good. Him and Penelope. <clears throat> All right, this is a real headline from Screen Rant. I had to roast them because it was ridiculous. They wrote in this headline, Oscar-nominated Marvel star Paul Giamatti campaigns for a wild James Bond role. Jesus Christ, man. So Paul Giamatti did an interview um, for one outlet, and he said like a dream job of his is to be a Bond villain, and like he would love to do an accent, and he would love to have his character wear furs. It's a lifelong goal of his to be a Bond villain. But to just call Paul Giamatti, who's had a 30-year career, incredible actor. He was in 10 minutes of a Spider-Man movie. A, mo- a Sony one. A Sony one. And, that, and Screen, ran, Screen Rant ran the article with the headline, Oscar-nominated Marvel star Paul Giamatti. They did this. We, we brought this up a bunch of times. They did it with Kate Blanchett. Yeah. They've done it with, I think, Mark Ruffalo. They've done it with a few other people where the headline... It's just clickbait. I get Mark Ruffalo. He's been in fucking eight movies. Yeah, the Kate Blanchett that makes one sense. started the joke. Because if you're in, in one, one movie, you can't call him a Marvel star. <laughs> Especially Giamatti. He's the bookend villain. He's in 10 minutes of screen time. Not even, probably. Yeah, That's it. But uh, Ruffalo's a Marvel star. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll give Marvel star to Ruffalo. Yeah. If you're in more than one movie, you can you could say it. But it started with Kate, right? Because... Kate Blanchett, Marvel, Marvel star, Marvel Kate star, Kate Blanchett. Blanchett. Let alone two-time Oscar winner, <laughs> Kate Blanchett. No, Marvel star, Kate Blanchett. <laughs> Jesus Christ! These, oh, these, they so want clickbait. clicks. They just want clicks. It's so clickbaity. <laughs> if they want clickbaits, at least say we know who Paul Giamatti is. Son of former MLB commissioner Paul Giamatti. Like, yeah, his, his father was an MLB commissioner. Yeah. Anyways, let's move on to some more news. <laughs> this is from Universal Studios. They broke a curse. The curse is broken. What curse is that? They haven't been number one at the box office as a studio really? since 2015 wow. for annual grosses. However, this is the first time since 2015 that Universal is the highest grossing studio of a year, thanks to Oppenheimer and Super Mario Brothers, which Oppenheimer hit $950 million. Kaken. And Super Mario Bros. obviously hit like $1.5 bill. Kaken. Plus, they had a bunch of other releases that did very solid at the box office this year. So, Universal had an excellent year, and they also, don't they work with... Blumhouse, so did they distribute yes, they, um, Megan? They distributed <clears throat> yes. a few of the other Blumhouse movies that were hits this year. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, so they, 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 they distribute Blumhouse movies. Correct. So, Correct Amundo. They love Blumhouse. You know your stuff. <laughs> 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 the finger gun point was just that sealed You know it, what you're man. talking about, man. You know it, man. You, you man, got it. <laughs> guys, listen to James. So congrats to Universal Studios for breaking that curse. Studio number two was Disney, even though they had so many flops. They had so many goddamn movies come out this year that, of course, they're... And all Warner Brothers had was Barbie. (laughs) (laughs) Because the DC movies did not do well. Oh, my gosh. 
What a yeah! Congrats, Brothers, congrats, Universal. Warner I never. I, I mean, year. I guess like Disney's just been Disney Warner Brothers have been dominating lately for a while. Superheroes, man. Yeah, and then maybe Paramount last year with Top Gun Maverick. Paramount for a top. couple of years for sure. Yeah. They had some really big hits. Top Gun Maverick. Then I just assume possible. Universal because they have Fast. I always. Oh yeah, add Fast into the mix as well. Eight hundred fifty million. Yeah. What a big year! I know, They've right? been eating it up. I don't think anyone's even close to them this year. For gross, they're all in their dust. Disney, I mean, technically Disney's is their second, but they make a lot of movies because they have Disney, they have Marvel, they have Star Wars, they have 20th Century Studios. So technically, Disney they, they had Pixar. they had a lot of bullets this year, but it's crazy they they came in second place to Universal still. Hmm. Crazy, crazy man, crazy stuff. Let's move on to some Batman rumors, more rumors, which is all BS. But Twitter ran with it, obviously. So the Batman Two people have been talking online about rumors of the villains for the Batman Two, and some of the announcements were Professor Pig, Scarecrow, Clayface, and Hush. And people have been talking about this all week. James Gunn came out online and categorically denied all of these rumors about the villains of the Batman Two. And like, guys, nothing's been released. Let's just. Let's just let it happen when it happens. Basically, if we tweet it, then it's legit because yeah. <laughs> everyone ran with it. I saw it. I'm like, this is the most bullshit headline I've it ever seen It came from some life. random guy on a random website. And everyone thought it was legit. And so many film Twitter people ran with it. It's like, guys, we need. I know you want clicks. I know you want engagement. But <laughs> there's no way this is true. I'll, I'll, I'll confirm it when Matt Reeves confirms it. Or someone. Or, or like, yeah. yeah. If Matt Reeves says it, then sure. Yeah. Or James Gunn says it, sure. We shouldn't like just run, run every story that gets put online it's just like this addiction to being first and addiction to like getting views and everyone thought it was true people were like oh it's too many villains we i don't want to see this it's, you don't even know if it's true don't or want, not don't even want to see it anymore <laughs> <laughs> too many villains obviously oh hush is an interesting main villains another <laughs> another warner brothers l we don't even know if it's <laughs> real <laughs> it's so silly man james gunn l <laughs> and then there's another one that robin's in it and he's a, he's a boy in it he's like a young boy like how teenager. about we just wait until a fucking trailer comes out <laughs> how about that guys or some images yeah goodness like I don't care. I'm, I don't even. I don't even look at any of this stuff because I don't. I know it's all BS until the actual film releases content and information. That's why we did. If you follow us on Twitter, we did not tweet anything about the Batman Two because we knew this was a fucking BS lead. BS. Most of them are. People want that engagement, man. They'll do anything for it. And at the end of the oh, day, oh, Clayface is in, is in it. Oh, no one remembers that they made a lie. They created a lie, a fictional thing, just for some views. Probably some YouTube views. That and short views. That short term. Uh, you count. That hit, yeah, man. That hit. That hit. You can't go a day without it. But hey, after that, no one thinks you're reliable anymore. They'll never look at your shit again. No, they will. I don't know. Well, that's like when they had people made up the thing that Zoe Kravitz got pregnant because Robert Pattinson <laughs> fucked her on top of the Batmobile. So dumb. <laughs> so dumb. And people believed it. So dumb. People believed it. They thought Zoe Kravitz was pregnant from Pattinson. I remember we reported it. We were cackling. Like, and they thought the that they had sex heard. on the Batmobile and after Matt Reeves caught them. If you Matt, like, do you, what is, what are you talking about? The actors are the first ones to leave. You think they just leave the Batmobile hanging out? Unlocked. <laughs> just like There's not, nobody there. They don't have it in a, in a special room. With you do think they car- couldn't just go to a hotel or <laughs> they would do it on the car? <laughs> People are so dumb. They won't believe anything, man. Oh, my God. Speaking of Batman, let's transition to Gary Oldman. Nothing to do with Batman, but he's in one of the films. Or th- several. He's in three of them. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> fucking idiot. Three of them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't call me a fucking idiot, man. <laughs> he's in, he's in uh, one Batman movie. Hey, man, I have a lot going on, okay? Batman star Gary Oldman. You can say it now. <laughs> Batman star Gary he's Oldman. Three, yeah. Uh, DC film star Gary Oldman <laughs> says his performance in the Harry Potter films was mediocre, so he was recently on the Happy Sad podcast. Happy Sad Confused. Happy right. Sad Confused podcast. <laughs> 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 he was talking about how he didn't love his performance. He says... Maybe if I read the books like Alan, if I got ahead of the curve, if I had known what's coming, I honestly think I would have played it differently. But Gary, I thought you were great. I love Gary. Gary, and you're really only in two movies. He's a very self-critical guy. He's very hard on himself, which yeah. is why he's so great. Azkaban, yeah, you're in it a lot. And then Goblet, you're just in the fireplace. Harry, who <laughs> put your name into the Goblet of Fire? Keep your friends close, Harry. <laughs> Keep your friends close. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Oldman really sat in a fire for that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> he's uh, he's always been very self-critical, and I saw an interview in that actual episode. He was talking about how when he gets on set, he's still nervous every day because he ha- he puts so much pressure on himself to be as good as he possibly can. Yeah. And so that's what's made him so great is because he is hard on himself. And he said he was most critical of the scene where his soul is being sucked out by the dementor, dementors, and he said that he he when he watches that he he cringes basically. I think he's great in it. I think he's great. 
Gary. Everybody loves him. Gary, you're great. You're, Gary, relax. Every, you're literally like the perfect series everybody's, black. Yeah, everybody says you're their favorite character. Of all the characters that are going to get recast for the show, Sirius is the one I'll be like so adamant about not accepting because he's so good as it. <laughs> when you see the announcement, fuck this guy. <laughs> How dare you stand where he stood? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I saw a great video gif of that of the next boy who's cast as Harry Potter. Like, How yeah. dare you stand where he stood? That's the rest of the audience <laughs> saying. We don't accept you. We will do our best. We'll watch it, though. Yeah, of course, we're going to watch the fucking shit out of it, man. But yeah, I love Gary. Gary. I love him. I know you listen to the show regularly. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that was a weird laugh. <laughs> it's like you were trying to stifle it, but it was an outburst at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I've never laughed like that in my life. That's it sounded right. like a laugh track. I thought, you died. <laughs> I thought you died. I thought you died for a second, man. Anthony's okay, everyone. But Gary, you're great. You're the best. Hey, Gary, don't listen to your inner demons. <laughs> Trust your gut. We're going to take a pivot to some sad news. We have a couple of passings this week. Tom Wilkinson passed away at the age of 70, 75. Obviously, you know him from Batman franchise as well as Mission Impossible and a ton of great character performances in tons of huge movies. He's great in Michael Clayton. He got nominated for that. But also, we saw him when we were kids in a movie we loved. Which one? The Patriot. He played drum- General Cornwallis. Holy crap, he is General Tom Cornwallis. Wilkinson. That was the first thing we ever saw him in. Forgot. So we've been watching him since we were little. You don't know my life. What if I'd seen him in something else? I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> Highly doubt that. <laughs> it's not like we watched every movie together. We really <laughs> yeah, did. We did. yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Definitely. But he was great. He's great in everything he's been in. And Michael Clayton was a movie I watched, and I was really like, who is this actor? He's phenomenal in it. And then he's obviously... He's had so many like supporting roles in so many movies that you've seen. He's one of those actors that just pops up in a lot of great movies, and he's always fantastic. And then South Korean star Lee Sun Kyun died at the age of 48. He plays the father and husband in Parasites. Mr. Park. Also known as in films of Dr. Brain, A Hard Day, Miss, My Mister, and All About My Wife Passed Away. Only 48 years old. Unfortunate. Yeah, Very unfortunate. Sad. Very sad news. All right, let's move on to some Ridley Scott news. So his film Napoleon broke a huge box office milestone at two hundred million dollars at the box office. That's good. So that's pretty solid. But Apple made some money though. It, yeah, they yeah. did because you know it's Apple. Will it make a profit in terms of its budget? Mm-mm. Probably not because it was a pretty expensive movie. It probably had to pull in four or five hundred. It won't make more than this. Much more than this. But I think that's more than people expected. It had a huge box office internationally. Domestically, it was not massive, but I think it did really great. Overseas. This, I think that's this why. is good news for it. I mean, it's a huge historical epic. Not many people are interested in seeing these anymore, but $200 million is pretty solid. Obviously, it's not going to profit, but it's really good box office. For rated R, too. It's you good. know Gladiator's going to pull out, yeah. a billion, though. I can't wait. I don't know about that. Dude, Gladiator's going to pull a billion. No way. It'll make half a bill. It'll make... Gladiator 2 at least going to make $750 million at the box office. It could. I hope it does. Then people will be making more ancient epics. I hope so. Because that's what happened with Gladiator. And then none of them were good. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah, Kingdom of Heaven's good. But even movies Kingdom like Centurion is just... Okay. The Eagle. The Eagle. Troy. Then they did what's his name, uh, Mr. Game of Thrones. He had Mr. Game of Thrones. Pompey. Oh, <laughs> Kit Harrington. Yeah, Kit Harrington. Yeah, that's not who I thought you meant by Mr. Game well, of Thrones. Well, when I think of <laughs> Mr. Game of Thrones, that's the first person Just I say think Jon of. Snow. I couldn't think of the name for a moment. It slipped my memory in in my mind. It escaped me. So you said Mr. Game of Thrones. Mr. Game of Thrones. I figured that'd be pretty obvious. <laughs> I thought you meant George R. R. Martin. I was like, what did he do before no, Game no, of Thrones? I'm thinking about no, I'm thinking about Kit Harrington. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> anyone would have made that correlation, Anthony. Ridiculous. Mr. Game of Thrones. Obviously, Kit Harrington. Marvel star Kit Harrington. <laughs> <laughs> You're not know, gonna be the headline suit yeah. <laughs> no but yeah i mean uh also alexander with uh colin farrell and angelina jolie yeah that was not good it was okay nobody could ever nobody could pull off what ridley did and i liked troy a lot the brad pitt movie when it came out however i watched it last year and it just doesn't hold up as well it's a little melodramatic oh yeah it's pretty melodramatic it's it's got some good moments got, it does it has so much potential yeah wolfgang peterson made that one it's, i saw i got a twitter debate with someone about Ridley, they said that uh, when it was, when it was the Tony Scott tweet, and they said, "Yeah, he's which Tony Scott Scott tweet? I can't remember. Was it okay? Uh, something." And then the, this this person said Tony Scott was always so much better than Ridley, and Ridley was boring and uninteresting as a director. And I was I was like, I was like, hot take, call him Blade Runner and Aliens, bo- Alien boring. <laughs> and they said, "Well, he hasn't done anything interesting in, since those." And then I wrote, about? "What about Gladiator?" He's like, "Oh." 
Of course you're saying all movies made before 20 years ago. I was like, I'm just disputing what you said. The Martian? Yeah. It's like, excellent. <laughs> it's unbelievable. People. He, imagine how boiled they were up inside. <laughs> oh, God was, damn you, Raiders like, of the Lost Podcast. I was just podcast. Like, like, laughing at them. <laughs> oh, no, like, of course you brought up Gladiator. Yeah, well, he made Proved you wrong yeah. twice. Proved you wrong twice. Uh, how could you bring that up? <laughs> this is amazing. What's this Tarantino thing right here? So, Paul Schrader says that Tarantino contacted him regarding his newest film. And the reason for this is because Tarantino, just like he did in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood with The Great Escape, of refilming footage from previous films... He's doing the same thing for the movie critic with multiple movies. So, oh, is he going to do a taxi driver? So he, no, not taxi driver, but he asked Quentin, Quentin asked him for permission to shoot, uh, reshoot the ending of Rolling Thunder, which um, Paul Schrader made shortly after Taxi Driver, and he wrote the screenplay for. So we now know that there are going to be old reinterpretations of old movie scenes in the movie critic. That's so cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. So it's going to be like he did with Grey Escape with DiCaprio taking Steve McQueen's role. I like how Imag- Paul Schrader... Reimagining that. Paul Schrader wrote, as I had written in the original screenplay before, it was completely re- rewritten and watered down. <laughs> That's very cool. All right, some more news. I wonder if that'll come out 2025, I guess, probably. They might be able to get it done by wintertime. You think he want to go out that quick? Tarantino? You mean go out like in his career? Yeah, like in 2024. Well, he likes the December releases. I'm trying. Was Once Upon a Time a December release? That was a summer release. Let me check. That was summer. Because he shoots fast, and his turnaround's really fast <clears throat> as well. He doesn't use that much CGI, so I mean, it's not like they do need to do a shit ton of post-production. Let's see. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was released July 2019. Yeah. But, you, he, but I guess it's been five years. Before that, he's been a huge December person. Wow. I can't believe how long it's been since Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Holy fuck. 2018? 2019. 2019. Five, almost five years that movie came out. Wow. But you goddamn hippies! But you goddamn hippies! Uh, age is like fine wine, though. Surprise that road! That movie is so good. <laughs> but man, that, that'd be crazy if we got Tarantino's final film in 2024. I mean, why not? Okay. I'm guessing that he he's because he was ready to film. He was ca- he was ready to cast and film. And he keeps the shit so secret that we don't really have, know how far along pre-production yeah, is. Exactly. And I mean, well, I mean, the thing with his movies is. Once upon a time in Hollywood, all of his movies there aren't that many scenes in locations. You know what I mean? His sequences are very long, so it's not like they need to go and build and travel to so many locations. That's a good point. You know what I mean, his movies seem to be pretty, I mean, straightforward for filming. I mean, even if you look at Inglorious Bastards, how much of that movie takes place at the movie theater? Quite a bit of it. Yeah. So, and a complete lack of CGI means much less time for post production. That's pretty pretty cool stuff. Good point. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if we got December twenty twenty four. Man, I I can't wait. That movie's gonna whatever his last movie is when it comes out. The movie critic, it's gonna kill at the box office. Tarantino's last movie. Yeah. Holy fuck! It'll probably be his most successful ever. The swung song. Everybody's gonna want to see it. Absolutely. It's gonna be a milestone in cinema history. It really will. It's an important date, yeah. and I hope that he comes out of retirement afterwards. I don't know. I, so. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing him make miniseries. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's move on to. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's got a new movie out called The Family Plan. Becomes Apple TV's most watched movie ever. <laughs> this is the spy one. The spy. Oh, with the family? Yeah. Okay, so he's, so, a, so he's they, a husband who and a, and a father who he's secretly a spy. No, he's not anymore. He used to be. Okay. And, and he's keeping it secret from his family, but then his, his spy life comes back to the bite enemies him. come after him, right? So he, has to, he goes on the run with his family while revealing eventually that he was a spy. Who's and, his wife? Is it Rose Byrne? I'm trying to remember the trailer. I think so, yeah. Um, and it's been announced that Apple said it's their most watched movie ever on the platform. According to Apple. Why would they lie? <laughs> <laughs> so people watch it. Why would they lie? Why Dude, they say it every time a movie comes out. No, every, stream, every streamer, every no, time don't. a movie gets released no, on their stream platform, the most watched movie we've ever had. On every a Thursday. Movie, <laughs> every movie. Dude. On a Thursday at yeah, 2 p.m. I want to see the fine prints. I don't think my Apple TV's done it that much with like most watched ever. I don't know, man. But they don't have a ton of movie releases that's every a, year. That's what I'm saying. I believe this. They don't have a huge library of films. Apple TV's most watched movie ever. Like they have more TV shows than movies. But I mean, it's probably a really good family movie. I mean, they know. I mean, they made a movie for families to watch together. Sure. You know. And Mark has a huge audience. People love Mark. Mac. People love Mac. All right. Get into this final bit of news. It's something to do with the movie Seven. So Seven. 
is coming out with a special edition box set. It is indeed in a box. Whoa! So it's in the cardboard box from no the film. No fucking way. So that's, I want to get this. So the 7th special edition will come out in January this year. And will come out with a 4K UHD and Blu-ray. A steel book case. Seven Deadly Sin comic books. Crime scene art cards. A John Doe 38-page booklet. A double-sided A3 poster. An investigation chalkboard art card. A number sticker of authenticity and more, all wrapped up in the deluxe. What's in the box? Dude, this package. is sick. While the Ultimate Collector's Edition contains 4K UHD and Blu ray, blah, 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 all that stuff. So you can either get just a Collector's Edition or you can get the actual box edition. Bro, we have to get this. We have to get it. And we got to put the box in the set, the fragile box. We should uh, we should DM whatever fucking studio that is and see if What's they can send it to in us for the free. Box? The edition, oh my god, this is so cool. So it comes out middle January. That's so, what, you get an actual one of the journals. Yeah, so you get the journal with the writing in it. And I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's the actual writing from that's in the book, in the movie, in those books. Really interesting. But it comes in the actual cardboard shipping box with fragile tape on it. That's so awesome, man. We gotta get this. What's in the box? What's in the box? Man, whoever made that movie, guys, hit John us up. John Doe has the upper hand. That's the unboxing I want. Hell yeah. For social media. It's one of the best movies ever made, hands down. Yeah. I think it's still Fincher's best, probably. That and Fight Club for I me. I said that I got destroyed, man. People don't understand great cinema. They don't understand. They don't get it, man. Seven is amazing. It's such a well-made movie. It's crazy he made that on his third film. Second film. Second. Second. He did Alien Cubed. Yes. Alien 3. Then he did Seven. Can you, can you imagine making Seven as your second feature? Pretty wild, man. This what a fucking G. One of the goats. Oh, my God, dude. Holy fuck. It's um, it's just a special movie. There's really nothing like it. It's crazy how many times I've seen it because it's really fucked up. But when I watch <laughs> when I watch Seven, I'm like, it's so perfectly made. It's so perfectly made. It's one of it's a high rewatch for us our whole lives because we used to watch this a lot. This was actually on <laughs> all the time when we were kids. It was on Spike TV a lot, this, but we had a DVD of it. I think and <coughs> we watched it quite a bit. Seven and I know that movie like the back of my hand. So good. Same. Same. It's really like, and it redefined the genre. It was, uh, wasn't that successful when it came out. It made some good box office, but uh, critics didn't like it. It wasn't well received when it first came out. One of my favorite episodes we've ever done is the seven episode. Me too. That is one of our best. It's one of my favorite thumbnails I've made too. Oh yeah, with the box. It's the box. It's in the box. It's in the box. All right. Well, that wraps movie news. Monday on the first tomorrow, we're doing an episode on. The best films of 2023. Anthony and I made a list of our 20 favorites. As, as well, well as the worst. The worst are pretty funny. We did our five worst films. That was a great episode. And then on Wednesday, we're getting started off strong for 2024 with an episode on the iconic, the legendary, the hysterical, Days and Confused from Richard Linklater. All right, all, all the way right, back all in right. 1993, dropping this all-time American classic. It was such a fun rewatch and episode to do, so don't miss that. We have so much coming for you this month. We've already filmed pretty much all of our episodes. I'll be out of town for about a month. I'll be in James will be gone for an entire month. I'll be in England for the entirety of January, but we've already filmed all of our episodes, and I will be remotely checking in. I'll be obviously joining you for Letterboxd and Movie News every week as well. Better to keep the movie watching up. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be watching many movies, but I'll be talking about what I'm doing there. Yeah, we can shoot the shit half yeah, the time. Yeah, because I'll be uh, ADing, assistant directing a movie in England. Hot shot over here. No, no big, big time. Deal. No Mr. Big deal. Mr. Big Time. Mr. James. AD. Mr. AD. So that'll be a blast. It's going to be an awesome experience. But while I'm gone, I'll be posting updates and stuff of what I'm doing. But I'll be able to talk about what we're filming and shit like that and the experience on Letterboxd and Movie News. It's going to be me and Juno for a whole month. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You're going to be alone for a while. Yeah. It's going to be nice, I it's bet. It's going to be great. Yeah, I love being home alone. Yeah. <laughs> Although I was home alone in Dad's house last week. Pretty spooky. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the, he lives in this big house in the middle of like a dense um, forest. A dense forest it's area. It's an old house, too. Yeah, and it's, it looks like the Amityville house, honestly. It looks just like it. Not just like it, but pretty similar. And I walked in because I slept there, and he was in Maine the night before I flew back to Boston. And I, I, I parked... In the garage, and I looked at the house, and it was just dark. <laughs> <laughs> it's surrounded by trees, and it was pitch black around it. And then I walked in, I turned on the light, and I was like, fuck, it's scary. It's quite menacing. It's, it's very creaky. It makes a lot of noises, The and the pipes are old, so when the heat's working, you hear pipes making like those scratching sounds, and I was like, fuck. It, it sounds like footsteps. Here. Yeah. When you're, I've slept in that house by myself, too, 
it feels like you hear footsteps and like creaking footsteps. And there's a lot of rooms. Not gonna lie. Be completely honest. I walked through that entire house <laughs> <laughs> to make sure there was nobody inside. Seriously? Yeah, I went through that whole what? house. I just didn't go. I didn't go in the attic. You're ridiculous, man. I was like, man, there could be someone in here. If they wanted to kill me, like it, it could be done. Be easily. too easy. It'd be so easy. Don't and wait. also, the doors don't have locks. Those yes, are, they do. Well, none of the doors. Now do. people are gonna try to find the house and break in. <laughs> no, no. I mean the front, the the, the, the bedroom, the doors. house doors have the locks. The bedroom, yeah. The bedroom house, doors don't have. It has they, security system, yeah. but. The, the bedrooms don't have... The doors don't close all the way. They don't close and they don't lock. The the doorknobs, they're there. They're for show. Yeah. They're just... <laughs> they're very old like doorknobs. You, you could push the doors open. But yeah, I was easily. like... I was like, man, this is spooky. The so, very old doorknobs. So very I, old house. So then I fortified the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's just so I could sleep easy. Because, <laughs> like, the door, it doesn't close. It just it stays open. So I was like, fuck this. Someone could just walk in here and kill me. It'd be pretty easy. It'd be super easy. So then I fortified the door with the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> so it was impossible to open. <laughs> then I slept like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Man, old big old houses, they're spooky at So night. like you couldn't even you so you put the suitcases up against the door so you couldn't open it? Yes, I fortified all. the door. No, well I was I just wanted to <laughs> paint the picture in my head, so it was a, So uh, So were so they propped up against the bed or something? Yes, so I put them on the floor against the bed. Okay, so, so they're in between the door and the bed, so yes. you literally physically couldn't open it. Impossible to do it. <laughs> then I was like, cool, I'm gonna sleep easily now. Why didn't you just do that? Do what? Instead of walking around the whole house, just fortify the door like that. You'd be good to go. Well, because I was like out and about in the house. I was doing stuff. <laughs> it was super dark. You were doing stuff. You, yeah, you I was looking... getting water. I made a tea. <laughs> 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 You're ridiculous. I was, I was looking around. So I was like, fuck this, man. I need to, I need to, I need to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> that nobody's waiting. Because like our dad was gone for days, so the house was empty for two days. So it's like... So criminal wanted to break in there like they were if they were scoping it out they would have been like okay there's nobody and the, nobody's been here for a day i'm gonna go in now <laughs> hey don't don't remember that story that thanksgiving story which one we went to a thanksgiving party and the guy who owned the house said that people broke into the house the day he flew oh, back that's right home, the day before and yeah. they left the house an hour before his uber brought him home yeah it happens that was wild and then that was that was a uh, back in november and he had the window the door the glass door had tar tarp up he hadn't replaced it yet. yeah they broke right in and his flight was delayed, but if his flight was on time, his Uber would have dropped him off when the criminals were inside his house robbing it. That's wild. So yeah, anything can happen, man. Anything, anything is possible. Plus, I mean, that's the movie. The house is spooky at night. It's, I guess by it's, yourself, it's menacing. It have is. you ever been in there by yourself? I told Alone? you, I I've stayed the night there by myself before. It's spooky. I'll give you that. One hundred percent spooky. And it sounds like you can hear people walking. Yeah, lots of creaks. All those creaks. It sounds exactly like someone walking upstairs. Yeah. Taking a, or it sounds like someone trying to tiptoe mm -hmm. above you. But also, he left the my dad. He left the closet lights on in a couple of the bedrooms, and I was like, "What the fuck is this light on for?" <laughs> <laughs> someone, I bet someone was looking around. They saw me pull up, and they just they, hid real quick. Yeah, they ran away. There's, uh, they ran into side the bathroom well, to hide. That, that would freak me out. <laughs> it was spooky. Like, why is this random closet light on? Two of the closet lights are on. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's creepy music playing on a record player. Who turned this record on? <laughs> and I was like, what if someone just screams downstairs? <laughs> I'd be like, fuck this. Very Edgar Allan Poe, Anthony. Yeah, it was spooky. But I got through the night. I survived. We're very glad you survived the night in the Dad's house. The suitcase has worked. Dad's horror house. <laughs> 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 no, I feel bad. He sleeps there all the time by himself. <laughs> He doesn't he, get scared of anything. He's not scared of anything. He's yeah, fine. He's, he's the fucking toughest guy I've ever if, met. If like a demon came up to him, he'd be like, he'd punch it right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> if I told him that story, he'd call me a little bitch. <laughs> I would no, he wouldn't say that, no. He'd make fun of you, though. Yeah, he'd definitely make fun of he's me. Like, he, would he would never let me live it down. Don't ever tell him this. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I don't think he knows how YouTube works, so I don't know if he'll listen. No, he probably does. Don't tell him. <laughs> he'll never let me live it down. I'm sending him Every split. time I go home, he'll, he'll give me shit about it. Oh, Anthony, yeah. You, you Don't worry, I turn all the lights on for you. Are you afraid to come over to my house? <laughs> Don't worry, I turn all the lights on for you. He would bust your balls big time. Every day. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> all right, that wraps <laughs> our final movie news of the year. Again, thank you so much. We hope you all have a wonderful New Year's Eve tonight and a wonderful 2024 starting tomorrow on January 1st. And stay safe. Have fun. Enjoy dropping the balls drop and... Watch, watch, watching the balls drop. Watch, dropping the, what I say? Dropping the balls drop. <laughs> watching the balls drop. 
I don't know why y'all keep coming back to the show. We fucking <laughs> can't speak sometimes. <laughs> but have a wonderful night. Take care, everybody. We appreciate y'all so much. See you next time. See you next year. See you next. See you next year, everybody. Catch you later. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well, notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.